All right, so right now I'd like to invite Greg Brown from our Creative Specialist team to come up and kind of give you an overview of how some of the new techniques in Mari 4 can be applied to actual texture painting workflows within Mari. Hey, how's it going, everybody? You know, it, what really sucks right now is that I get to come up here and show you something I made in the hotel room last night, right after you saw all this amazing work from top-level artists. So that's the part that sucks about my job. But the thing that's awesome about my job is that I get to work with amazing pieces of software like Mari and meet the people who actually create it. And actually, I wanted to kind of start this uh, presentation off by telling a story that Jack Reasley, the original creator of Mari, loved to tell. And that was where Mari came from. You see, Mari was created at Weta Digital, and it was created to fulfill a need. And that need was being able to paint on extremely high detailed models while seeing the rest of your paint in context while you're working. And this came because they were working on Kong. And without Mari, they were going to have to use a piece of software they already had, where every single artist in the department would have to start off by loading up a single UDIM, for instance, on the tip of a finger, paint that one UDIM, unload it, load up the next UDIM, paint it, unload it, next UDIM, and continue iterating on through. Now, that's a nightmare if you're creating anything, but it's even worse when it has to be brought to somebody like, as Jack puts it, PJ, Peter Jackson. Because PJ would always say, more wrinkles, less wrinkles, didn't matter how good it was, and it would go back to the artist, and you load up that first UDIM, paint it, unload it, load up the next UDIM, and go on through. And so Jack was brought into Weta to build Mari. And it was absolutely groundbreaking technology for its time. And it's still groundbreaking technology, because no other application is capable of showing the levels of detail and resolution that Mari is capable of. Now, the thing about Mari, though, it's highly technical. And it's technical because it came from a technical need. And with Mari 4.0, our goal is to simplify an extremely technical application, make it more accessible to users, make it easier to use, and also make it so that people are just happier using it every single day. All right, so this is Mari 4.0. And this is the beginning of refining our UI to make sure that users have a much more comfortable experience. So along the top border, you can see that we've simplified that nightmare of a bar that used to be up there with way too many buttons. We have all the things you need quickly and easily accessible. And along the left, we have all our primary painting tools with also the ability to hit control and access everything underneath. And on the right, we now have our new palettes toolbar, which can be expanded and contracted so that you can have a viewport-centric workflow if you want to. Now, we also set up a couple basic palettes in place. You know, for people who are getting started, they need to know what palettes are available, the things that you're going to need to use frequently. And so those are there for people who are getting started. Now, if you use Mari already, you already reconfigure it like crazy. That's what you do. And of course, we still have that flexibility in place. And so I can close down all those palettes and then go ahead and pop on over and start expanding the palettes I want. In the case of this demo, I'm going to stick with the shaders, the channels, and the layers palettes because shaders can or contain channels and channels contain layers. So I want to make sure that I can see all those things as I'm working between all these different channels to create a layered material in the end. And so once I have all that set up and I'm happy with the way everything is looking, then I can actually begin the process of setting up my project. Now, there's a couple different ways. Maybe some people here would even say there's more than just a couple. There's many ways to set up your project. But since we are very material focused right now, we want to make sure that we actually have a setup that is uh, capable of showing a layered shader in an intelligent and intuitive way. And so you can see right here that I actually have, I'll just step back there. We actually have a layered principle, uh, the, um, the Disney BRDF, the principled shader in place that has lots and lots of different available channels. And so once I have those channels actually set up and in place, then I can go ahead and start adding layers within it. And what I like to do is I like to use some of Mari's procedurals. And by using Mar Mari's procedurals, then I can go ahead and add a color procedural in place, and that allows me to go in there and start modifying things like, for instance, the metal color. And so I'm going to go ahead and create another procedural, set that up so that I can actually create another group, and start organizing this by groups. 
since I have metal, I want to lay paint on top of metal, and I want to start building out this relationship. And eventually, I'll start focusing on masking. And actually, that's one of the areas that Mari excels at, is the ability to build out these very complex relationships. Because the way that materials are represented in CG, as many people here know, there's so many different layers. And especially when you're dealing with something like Mari, where if you have a complex model, you have 100, 200, 300, 400 UDIMs, each of which has up to 12 different channels inside of them, and then spread across multiple different material types, you need to be able to intelligently um, actually organize that so that you can have paint on top of metal. And so if we'll go ahead and just step on board here, what I want to do is I want to be able to go ahead and create a paint like this. So this is the ug ugliest type of paint you could possibly have. It's, it's kind of like a, a nice starting point, though. And I'm still going to stick with my procedurals. And if you'll notice, I haven't done actually any painting yet. And the way things have been organized now is so that that's not necessarily the focus. The focus is creating relationships between different contrasting materials. I'm just going to change that color quickly and easily. Any of those procedural layers can be baked down to a paintable layer in the end. Makes my life a lot easier when I start off, and also allows me to preserve performance once I get further on down the road and I start having to do that fine-tuned detail, hand-touch painting. So I went with yellow because this car looks like it should be yellow, and I love Fifth Element. Funny story, my hair is blonde because I was Corbin Dallas. I was the best Corbin Dallas this past Halloween, I swear. <laughs> Lilu did not show me up. Everybody paid attention to me, I promise. And so now that I have this yellow in place, that's my basic paint sitting on top of an actual metal. And now I get to begin the process of layered mask stacks. And this is super cool. It's one of my favorite aspects of Mari. It allows me to create masks non-destructively because I have a separate stack that can contain as many layers as you, you want inside of it. And in this case, what I want to do with my actual paint layer is that I'm going to go through all my different channels and create all the different um, mask stacks that I need that are associated. And I'm going to share that one single mask that's from the color channel amongst all the rest of the channels. And it's empty. That's why you're not seeing anything update. But the cool thing about this is I can spend masking-wise all my time from this point forward over inside the color channel. And so now I'm going to go ahead and hop on into the, the UDIM view, select all my UDIMs, drop a black on there. I have no paint anymore. It's only metal. And then I'm going to go ahead and just select my well-organized UDIMs and drag and drop white. And now I'm exposing yellow paint on top of metal. And this is the basics of the workflow to try and get a nice layered material. Because at any point in time, I'm also able to go ahead and hop back in and paint on top of it. In this case, case I'm going to change my bake behavior. Because the way that Mari works is that when I paint, Right now, as I paint this stroke, I'm actually painting on a pane of glass between me and the model. Now, allows me to move the model around behind it, as you can see right there. And I can choose to bake it down on the surface to actually apply it onto the surface, or just go ahead and clear it quickly and easily with the tools on the left-hand toolbar. And so once that's in place, now I want to go ahead and begin the process of creating some of the rest of my materials. So all I have in this scene is actually a metal, a paint, a glass, a rubber, and then a grime layer. And what I like about this is it allows me to think about materials the way that they're actually, the way that they exist in the real world. It's about to say created, it's not created, it's how they exist. Because a material has its own individual attributes, right? So a glass is very reflective and has very low roughness. However, it's not just a matter of the attributes of a material. It's the attributes of that material in response to the environment. And that could be as simple as the light that is reflected off of a surface, or as complex as the wear that comes from an environment. Like, say, for instance, if you were in a humid area, that would actually create corrosion and rust and things of that sort. And so what you need is you need to create the attributes of the material, and then you need to create the attributes associated with the environment itself, all the additional wear. So now that I've set up all my respective groups, and I've actually got mass stacks in every single one of those, I want to go through the process of actually creating my in first initial base material to start really getting something that looks like a real material. And so right now, in this case, I'm using the triplanar projection uh, procedural item. And I can go ahead and just load up a couple great textures that I lo uh, downloaded off of textures.com, an amazing site. And I can uh, start tweaking and tuning the way that the 
three projections are scaled between one another and start to get something that looks like a natural real world material very quickly, very easily. And also, just like everything else inside of Mari, this can be shared between multiple channels. And so I actually have corresponding textures between all the different channels. And as I modify the scale of one, it populates to all the rest. So at all times, I'm working in context, which is extremely important, obviously. And so this is another example of some of the really great workflows that 4.0 makes much easier to achieve and how quickly and easily you can get something that looks fairly decent. And if I watched myself doing this, I'd be like, dude, you suck. That is so lame that you need to actually go in there and paint something. But when you need to get a job done, it's really great to have access to these procedural components just to get something together that looks good quickly and easily. All right, and now I have my way too perfect paint sitting on top of the beginnings of my OK metal. And I've also baked out a couple different layers that I've brought into Mari. Now, anything that actually supports the ability to bake to multiple UDIMs, you can bake those UDIMs and, of course, bring them into Mari. I'm going to use my opportunity to, to throw out Moto there, because that's the one that I love to use. Moto can bake to multiple UDIMs. And now I've got some nice, a nice occlusion layer, and I've also got a nice little edge wear layer. Now, it's not quite perfect, and that's when I can go in and start using some of the painting tools to start masking out. Um, some of this wear that is, it, is on the surface, so it doesn't look quite so perfect. And this is you know, one of those areas that Mari just absolutely excels. You know, there's huge numbers of brushes that are available to you, and you can go in there and really tweak and tune exactly the look and feel that you want. And of course, the number of blending modes that are available for all the individual layers on Mari make this so much easier. It's one of the reasons Mari is like my new best friend. So once I have that um, set up, then I can go ahead and start beginning the process of taking this material further. And I'd say, you know, for a night in a hotel room with lots and lots of coffee, not too bad of a job. And so if I go ahead and pop on over here to the next section, now what I need to do is I need to start taking this all further. And so I've got an additional set of layers here that I can use uh, for a triplanar projection to roughen up my paint, because that paint was far too perfect. Definitely not the, happy with the way that looks yet. And now I'm going to turn on that dust grime layer. And so my dust and my grime has its own physical properties that is being layered on top. And since I set up all my masks early on, I don't have to think about that while I'm working. I can go back and I can tweak and tune those masks if I want to, but I can focus just on developing the look. And again, some nicely baked textures brought into Mari that are further refined with that hand touch painting that's necessary to have something that actually looks pretty decent. And our adjustment layers, uh, these are an absolute lifesaver. Um, being able to non-destructively go in and adjust, especially a grayscale image, to try and punch up a texture quickly and easily and have all these layers layered on top of each other that you can each uniquely modify. Now, it's not quite done because the glass isn't quite right just yet. And so I'm going to go ahead and come on over here to project a texture onto the surface. And I can go ahead and just paint this right on down to the glass. And you can see it's not affecting any of the other associated materials because those masks are already set up. And I can just add some roughness and some dirt and some grime on this nasty car that, I mean, I, 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 that you'll definitely get the flu if you go in that car. Um, but uh, once I'm done with that, I can continue to use some of the other tools um, that are available in Mari that are super cool. I'm baking that texture down onto the front windshield now. But another one of my favorites, since that texture sits between you and the actual physical model, once I paint down on the side windshield, I can use other additional tools, like one of my favorites, the pin tool, to continue modifying that texture. And there's also a grid warp, which I think everybody is pretty much familiar with. But being able to see how that looks in context, properly shaded with the, uh, the physically based shader, and still being able to warp it is absolutely wonderful. Like this thing is amazing for characters. Like one of my favorite areas to use this on is projecting a texture of a human head on a human head model. Like when you're trying to nail the outline of the ridge of an eye, things of that sort, I've wasted hours and hours of my time and just doing that. And this one tool absolutely is a lifesaver in that regard. So extremely cool being able to quickly and easily in Mari 4.0 rough out materials, figure out a generic look for what you want, 
and then continuing using all this high technology to actually go through and develop what is an extremely high resolution set of textures that look like they belong in the real world. And this is just the beginning of our refinements in 4.0. You guys saw the video from Rory, our product manager, talking about the future of Mari. And so I think this is a pretty good start towards making Mar Mari more user friendly and, uh, and making it easier to use. Because the easier it is to use, the more people who are going to use it, and the more people who are going to be capable of doing work like that. So thanks so much. Appreciate you guys coming out. <laughs> <laughs>